Dear students, good evening. Welcome to Law Excellence IAS. Let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 14th January 2021. I wish you a happy Sankranti festival and around my home there are many festive vibes. You may face certain uh, difficulties or disturbances in my class today. Now, mediating the farmers' protests is difficult terrain. You know, Supreme Court of India appointed a committee after staying the implementation of farm laws. There are constitutional arguments surrounding that saying, can Supreme Court interfere with the legislative work and stay the farm laws? Supreme Court can judicially review the form laws for their constitutionality. Can it stay the work of the legislature? Can it stay the implementation of the form bills or form laws um, once they are being passed by the legislature pending their judicial review? What could have been a right course of action for judiciary? It could have ordered or it could have taken up the judicial review ASAP. And the second, the major issue between Central government and farmers today is the trust. Farmers don't want to relent and they don't want to they don't want to move back. Their demands are very clear. There has to be a legal guarantee for MSP. And the second thing is farm laws need to be repealed. On the other hand, government is not ready for the same. And government is giving more oral assurances, not the legal assurances. And the third most thing is Government appears to be too close to corporate bodies and it is not instilling confidence in farmers on the government. And Supreme Court ordering a stay on a law passed by the parliament appears to be judicial overreach without any doubt. And on the other side, a, a committee was constituted. This committee's job is what? Is it mediation? So mediation means there has to be certain rules. What are they? It has to be accepted by both the parties and both the parties to the mediation has to volunteer the same. The people who are mediating have to be neutral. Did Supreme Court adhere to these particular principles or not? And what is the outcome of mediation? What is going to be its fate? That is not clear. In this context, public trust or Supreme Court is a reserve of public trust. If Supreme Court is going to get into this political landmine, it may lose or risk losing this public trust which can be dangerous. Farm laws, their constitutional validity and hope. So the farm laws are not constitutionally valid. This is the argument that has come up. The major reason is agricultural market, agriculture as a subject is in the state list. Added to that, the procedure which is followed in the enactment of these form laws is also not constitutionally valid. The bills are passed by a voice vote in Rajya Sabha. Remember carefully, any bill has to be passed by both the houses of the parliament with a simple majority. The voice vote is nowhere stated in the procedures of the constitution or the Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha, but it is followed as a convention across the parliaments of the world. But any member asks clearly that a vote has to be recorded. The speaker or for that matter chairman has to record the vote. So in spite of members asking for a recorded vote, this is not conducted in Rajya Sabha. That way it violates the article 100. So Supreme Court is not supposed to involve in the proceedings of the house. We all accept that article 122 clearly states that. But if you carefully observe over here, whenever a constitutional violation happens, not the procedural violation, the Supreme Court can definitely involve in the procedure to ensure the protection of the constitution. That's why under article 122, there is no objection for the court to intervene with this. Because of this, it can be stated that this particular law did not go through the procedure before it was enacted. And the second point is, it also gives the necessary respite to the government. The government is trying to find a way out. If the Supreme Court repeals or declares them as unconstitutional, the government can go back to the drawing board and can make the new laws. It can get it repealed and remake the laws. That can be a good solution for this stalemate which is going on now. Two protests and false parallels. It is a protest on Capitol Hill and a protest in Hong Kong. 
in Capitol Hill was attacked by the Trump supporters of the Trump. And in Hong Kong, the people who are demanding for democracy and people who are demanding for the repeal of the Chinese autocratic laws, they have attacked the Legislative Council there. China brought in a comparison between these two. But author tries to make a difference. The Capitol Hill attack is questioning of the democracy. So it is a seat of democracy. It is about unsettling the legitimate election and the seat of democracy. In the Hong Kong, this has become the Legislative Council has just become the trumpet of China or mainland China. So the Hong Kong people wanted to bring back the democratic values by attacking the symbol, the symbol Legislative Council. So they have attacked in the night when the council is not in session. It is not to cause any harm to the members. So the Hong Kong attack is more an attack of autocracy and the Capitol Hill attack is more an attack on democracy. So comparison between them shall not be made. That is what author is saying here. Building trust in vaccines. So any vaccine has to be trusted. Openness and transparency is important. Along with that openness and transparency, the people shall be allowed to participate. It means participatory framework will bring in necessary trust, which is necessary for the good of all. Karnataka's Jain leads backwards. Karnataka was a very progressive state. Way back in 1919 itself, Karnataka has brought in reservation certain backward classes. And social justice, Devraj Wurz, all these people fought for the same. And it is a technological capital or hub of India. In this context, the progressive mind has created the wealth and this society is known for liberal values. But today, the Karnataka supporting or enacting anti-conversion laws, anti-cow slaughtering laws, or various kinds of religious extremism visible in Karnataka makes it go backward in time. That is what author is saying. Next is final blow. So here Cuba-America relations are being spoken. So Cuba is a communist regime which has come into existence due to revolution. And America during the Cold War era tried to throw the Cuban regime out of power. Fidel Castro, you know all the things. And USSR was supportive of Cuba. And you know this famous Cuban Missile Crisis which almost led to another world war. Now, during Obama era, he has uh, reached to Cuba and he visited Cuba. That's a historic moment. In this scenario, today, Mr. Trump has declared Cuba as a ter state sponsoring terrorism. And no country can accuse Cuba of this. There might be ideological differences. On one side, USA is engaging with China, another communist country from 1970s. But they do not want to do the same thing with Cuba. And today, Biden is going to come to power. And Mr. Trump is taking a series of foreign policy steps on the last days to create a certain lag on the decision making of Mr. Biden. He wants to hold any kind of decisional changes of Mr. Biden. So Biden shall not hold back and has to ensure a liberal order and has to actively engage with the neighbors and to bring back the good olden days of hope. That is the essence of this article. Terror trial. Today, terror financing is increasing like never before. The traditional sources of finances are being replaced by digital sources. Let me explain. Human trafficking, wildlife traf trafficking, child trafficking, these all have become the sources of money along with money laundering, drug trafficking and everything. Terror financing has come from all these sources. These are traditional sources. Today, anonymous currencies are growing. Anonymous currencies and blockchain technology has made this anonymity possible. Second, digital security is also weak. This all making, the po making it possible to have a new source of finance to the terrorists. Now let us take, in the context of Pakistan, FATF review is pending. It has given a list of things to be done by Pakistan to remove it out of grey list. To satisfy this, today Pakistan has declared uh, Mr. Lakhvi, Hafiz Saeed as uh, culprits and convicted them. But is this spirit is going to stay with the Pakistan is the major question over here. So a collective action is required by the world 
in fight against terrorism. If you take on the religion or the regional basis, if the country starts supporting terror elements, it is going to spoil the entire fight against the terrorism. Let's take Iran, Turkey. These are sponsoring, these are supporting terror elements uh, in the UN Security Council and United Nations per se. China also has blocked uh, recognition of Masood Azhar as international terrorist, designated terrorist. So in this context, on terrorism, we all shall see it as a foul play on the dias, on the world. That is the essence of this article. A strong India would act as a counterbalance to China, United States of America. So this article states that a document, a classified document of Trump administration was brought in out. What essentially it says is, India has to become a net security provider in the region. And quad-like mechanism to have to strengthen and retain America's position in Asia Pacific, Indo-Pacific which is called as now. Maintaining US strategic primacy in the region and liberal economic order is the importance of or is the necessity of the time. That's how US feels it has. US also feels China as an ideological enemy today and in this context it wants to support India out and out. And it believes that a strong India with strong links to like-minded countries like Japan, USA can act as a counterbalance to China. Obviously, it will also put India in a risky position. India has to support itself um, and at the same time, India's interests are not totally aligned with the countries like US, Japan, Australia, etc. who are said to be the members of Quad. And USA is also intent to support India on its act east policy. These are the articles, these are the points of this classified document. No clarity on tomorrow's talks a day after Supreme Court stay on form laws. So Supreme Court stayed the form laws and the further course of action is not clearly mentioned. Publication of notice of marriage is not mandatory. In the case of the Special Marriages Act, two people from different religions, if they want to marry each other, they have to give a prior notice of 30 days. Now, High Court of Allahabad clearly stated that any kind of the prior notice can hurt the privacy of the young people. So, young people who wanted to marry. That's why it clearly stated that no publication of the notice is necessary for young adults to get married under Special Marriages Act 1954. These are the articles for today. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And once again, happy Sankranti.